there is no formula, you know. The people think different, they react different, you know, and, uh, and uh, that's what makes the, you know, our sport so beautiful. Right, it's, it's completely individualistic style. Completely individual, of attitude. course. You can, of course, uh, jiu-jitsu is, is a very individual thing, but on the other hand, you need the support for the team, so it's, it's, it's all combined, right? You cannot do jiu-jitsu by yourself, but you need to break that, you know, that problems yeah. by yourself, you know? Right. Nobody can do for you, you know? Yeah. Nobody can go inside you and say, hey man, come on, be brave, you know, keep going. This must be your will. Right. Yeah. It's like that old adage, where the teacher shows you the door or whatever, you have to walk through it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. What's up everybody? I'm here with Fabio Gergel uh, at Alliance Jiu Jitsu in Keller. We're here to uh, talk about his tour and uh, his Viver de Jiu Jitsu. Now, I had a really incredible time when I was training uh, down in Sao Paulo with you. Uh, it was years ago, but I, yeah. I was like one of my dreams. Like I'm gonna uh -huh. go train with the general in Sao Paulo and like- Yeah, you know, it was a good time, it was a good I, time. I remember like just being blown away by like, man, this crazy atmosphere, so many, so much testosterone, <laughs> and so many like just world champions in one room, like just murdering each other. Yeah. It was really remarkable to see, like, and then just to be a part of it also, but just, it's really, it was super humbling in a lot of ways, but um, how, do you, how do you go about managing those, those egos over the years, like, you know, decades, and keep your academy together and, and manage yeah, all that? Yeah, I think we learn uh, a lot of our mistakes, right? Alliance had a, had a split in 2002, uh, when we lost all the black belts we had in that time, you know, and it was a, a really, you know, shock thing for us. But we learned, and one thing that I learned is that in order to keep everybody together, you need to treat everybody the same way. At the time that we were there, we had like all the world champions were there training together, right? But I just don't feel that ego, you know? I treat them like, anybody else, right? They, they gotta do the hard work as everybody does. They, they need to show up for us and leave the mat last. And uh, that's, that's the way I believe uh, the guys can accomplish what they accomplish. There's no secret, it's just don't feed the ego. You know, the, it's very common, you see many, many times, uh, a school got a nice athlete, and there's the best guy in the gym, and they start to put all the energy in that guy, you know? So you, you not just create a monster, you know, giving all the attention to that guy, putting the, putting the guy in the pedestal, but you also uh, treat the other guys the wrong way. So you don't give attention to the majority of the students because you are just taking care of the guy that are good in competition. So you never build a team like that, you know? In order to build a team, you need to to, to treat everybody in the same way, with the same respect, same attention. Sometimes the guy that, you know, were there training quiet, you know, that's the guy gonna get the best result. You never know, right? So you just need to treat everybody in the same way. And this is not just for the academy, I think it's for life in general, you know, I have to respect everyone. So uh, regarding your academy specifically, what, what did you learn having the academy for so long I helped Jacare in his academy since I was 15, right? So I've been working the academy all my life. But I got to a point when I had like close to 300 students in my academy in Sao Paulo. And uh, I was thinking, man, come on, why can't I grow this business in a way that, that I should, that I imagine, you know, that I dream of? You know, uh, we are in Sao Paulo, it's a 20 million city, you know, people, and, uh, and we should bring more people to Jiu Jitsu, what I'm doing wrong. And then I realized that we didn't have any source to get the information, you know. I was doing the same thing that the people 
uh, doing now, you know, just teaching the classes and put myself there and all my energy, but I was doing a lot of mistakes. So I started searching and I found a guy that was, uh, he used to manage different, different gyms in Sao Paulo, he's a consultant. And uh, I hired this guy for three years, you know, to work with me. And uh, so I, I started understanding every small aspect, you know, that changed your business. And I started to apply on my own, right? So, uh, and then it merged with the digital marketing. So when I started doing this all combined, my, my school from 320 students that I had jumped to 520 in eight months, you know? Wow. Say, wow, <laughs> that is it. Yeah. Together with that, we, we just put our curriculum in place, very strict curriculum, you know, and treat the students for their purpose. Because the problem is, when the students come to the academy, the instructor used to teach what they like to teach. Yeah. And that's completely wrong. Yeah. You need to teach what your students are able to learn. Right, so is it, is it, it's just, you just need to change your point of view when you teach, right? And teaching is about giving. And what, when you are a fighter, a competitor, is all for you, right? So that switch that the instructors sometimes, they don't realize that they need to do, right? So uh, we start working on that, you know, and uh, dividing the levels, and uh, applying the methodology and create more classes for the beginners. And, uh, and then the, I just see the academy growing, growing, growing until uh, they, they, they will reach the full capacity of my academy, you know. And I'm still there, of course, sometimes you lose some students who go back, and, but I, I have pretty much 100% of my, my capacity that I can, you know, that I can have in my academy. Awesome. And, I'm, and I'm not there for three months. Right, you've been, been touring for three months. Because there's another thing that we, we cover on the course is that we need to, to build a business, not a job, right? So if you need to, of course you need to work, and I have worked in my academy forever, right? For, I used to teach like 11 classes a day. Right. You were there, you saw me teaching many, many classes every day. But the point is, you need to, of course, as you get older, you don't want to, teach that much anymore. You don't have energy to do that. So you need to build a business in order to one day you can step out and your business is still there. Having that perspective shift was, okay, yeah, I need to, I, I went one, one, one direction with, with, with it, whereas oh, I need to focus on every little aspect of the business. And then, then I also kind of start, start slacking and teaching and it's, it's a hard balance to find sometimes when you're growing, right? Yeah, in, but, the, in the beginning, there is no other way. Right, because if you, if you try to, let's say, I have 11 instructors in my academy, but I have a bunch of students, so I can, I can afford that, right? But in the beginning, there is no other way. You have to teach, right? You have to teach, you have to, 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 to graduate your students, so one day you can have another instructor that gonna help you out, so you can step a little bit out and do other things, you know? I'm 100% involved with my business, with my academy, but, I don't really need to teach anymore if I don't want to. I go there because I love to teach, yeah. right? But my business runs without me. That would be, would that be your definition of, that's a successful academy that's kind of reached its mature maturation? That, that, that's what I think, that is what I believe, you know? And uh, it takes around 10 years to get your academy mature enough to, for you to step out. You know, the people sometimes they, they want to get the result very fast, and this is not possible, you know. Right. You, your academy in 10 years, you're going to rotate a bunch of students, you know. They're gonna, the students going to bring more people, and, and then you have the, the kids training with you because the parents were your students before. So that kind of rotation make your academy sustainable, right? So that's when we reach the mature. But before that, you need to be there on the mat, you need to create that, you know, that culture and that philosophy in your academy for sure. <laughs>